Welcome to this new how-to. In this how-to we're going to look at how you can use the user points in Little Nav Map. User points, as the name already says, are uh, points on the map which you can define as an end user. And you have multiple points, or multiple types of points I should say. For example, you've got the points of interest, which you should know when you're pl playing Flight Simulator. Maybe also other simulators have points of interest. Uh, and there are several other options and we're going to discuss them uh, during this uh, video. So to add a point, we first of course need to go to a location where we want to add a point, right? So for example, in this case, we're it at uh, Rotterdam Airport, which is here. Uh, let's go to, I would say, some point of interest, which are in the uh, city center. So for example, uh, let's add the, uh, the bridge. Uh, we can do that by uh, right clicking on it and then go to user points and then say add user point here right so again it's not that hard but you can find it really easily either by using here the option here right clicking here or you can do it by uh, importing a csv and the importing csv part that's something we're going to show in a few minutes so again, right click on the point where you want to add the waypoint or the user point and then select add user point here. Then you will get this nice screen. Uh, let me uh, zoom into it a bit. So in this screen, you can define the identifier and that needs to be a unique identifier and also can be a maximum of five characters long. So keep that in mind, uh, region, well, explains itself right you need to add that and you can see that when hovering over those uh, items that's only required for the x plane as stated here but if you read the documentation from a little nav map it's also is uh, mandatory for the garmin so not specifically for flight simulator 2020. Uh, so other than that we've got a long list of types and you can see we've got airport, airports, airstrips, uh, bookmarks, buildings, uh, DME, flags, helipads, history, uh, landform, lighthouses, uh, NDBs, point of interest. Uh, you can see we even have seaports here, uh, water if you want to add it. So in this case, it's a bridge. So let's see what most uh, what's most suitable here. Uh, so let's add the... Uh, point of interest here and then call it uh, as it's been called now we need to come up with an identifier and keep in mind that's only required for um, the uh, explain and for the Garmin uh, so we need to come up with an identifier uh, so let's uh, ER um, BRG for example uh, location uh, the Netherlands in this case and you can provide of course your remarks so you can tell something about it uh, optionally you can add the tags right so you can add the tags which you want to identify for example if you want to create a, a tag uh, bridges or bridge then you can identify or categorize them per um, let's say point of interest type in this case uh, visible from so from which distance is this uh, visible and the elevation or altitude from the bridge itself i don't know what it is and there we've got the coordinates and as you can see the coordinates are valid and that's really critical now if we would press add it would add it to the uh, database itself but you can also select the option temporary user point delete on the next startup which means for example if you are scheduling a flight you want to add some point of interest which you want to visit uh, which you can add to your flight plan then you can use this option uh, if you don't want them to be added to your main uh, user point database so once you're happy with that you can click ok and if you want to start from scratch you can click on reset so we're pressing ok now and as you can see a waypoint has been added here uh, which is the identifier ERBRG and uh, the name in Rosenbrug so that's what you can add so to show you another one uh, what we can do is for example 
Uh, what was the other waypoint type we had? <laughs> Let me see it. Um, user points. Add user point here. We need to first click it as well. ERBRG. So it looks like it's keeping the old one. So let's uh, see if it works if we add another one. Uh, in this case, it's. Uh, where is it? It's a seaport. Gonna specify a location here. Uh, port. So making sure that the coordinates are okay, are okay and you see uh, then the waypoint has been added. So if for some reason you made an error in the waypoint, right click on it and then we need to go down here and say edit waypoint. That's one option, right? Then you can modify everything uh, you want to modify. Let me zoom out again. And if you want to, uh, let's say, move a waypoint, then you can select move user waypoint and then you're able to move the waypoint. For example, if I edit it here, but I want to have it uh, here, I can simply do that. It will update the coordinates, really useful. Now, you also saw that there was an option to remove a waypoint. So let me zoom out again. And that's the bottom option, right? Delete user waypoint. It will ask for confirmation. Once you click delete, it's gone. All fine, all nice. Now let's go to the top menu. In the top menu, you've got several options. One of them is to search for a waypoint. Uh, so I press the search option. And what you need to do is on the right side of the screen, uh, where you normally would search for, for example, airports or nav aids or procedures, you also have the tab called user waypoints. Based on that, you can type in the identifier of the waypoint. Uh, you can uh, search on the type of waypoint or type of user point, I should say. And based on that, you can, I would say, search in your own database. Keep in mind that in this case, there's only one waypoint. That's the one we just added, right? Or user point. I keep saying waypoint, but it's a user point. Now, the cool thing is that you also can share those waypoints, right? If you go to the upper section here, you can say export to CSV. And that will launch this window. And there you can say, hey, I want to append it to an already existing file. If you're, I would say, already have an export and you want to simply add some other user points, make sure that you leave this option checked because, or check this option because else you will overwrite everything, right? Uh, here it says export selected entries only. And you can say, okay, hey, I want to add a header to the first line. Uh, one remark about that is if we go to the uh, documentation of little nav map, you can see that uh, it contains a long list of fields which are required. The type, the name, identifier, long and latitude, those are the required fields. All the other ones are all optional, so you don't need to specify them if you don't want to add them. What will happen if you add the option to add a line uh, as a, or I would say add a header as the first line, it will simply add this piece on top of your document, right? So keep that in mind. Now, the cool thing is that um, several people also have published waypoints, right? You can, for example, go to uh, flight sim.2 and you will find the little nav map Microsoft Flight Simulator POI database. I already downloaded it, so let's import it uh, into our uh, little nav map configuration. So we're gonna click on import CSV and then we will go to the uh, folder which contains the uh, point of interest. And here you will see a long list, right? So they uh, split it up in multiple sections. One is the 3D cities photogrammetry. One is the airport standard looks and premium. One is the footage locations, the point of interest, and then also the world updates, uh, split per world update uh, being released. So let's uh, go for the point of interest and then click on open. Uh, now, if we go to the uh, waypoint list, we probably need to zoom in again. Uh, let me do that. You will see a long list of entries. Uh, let me make it a little bit bigger. With nicely the name, 
and you can see that there's no identifier and region here again that's okay for i would say flight simulator 2020 but keep in mind if you want to use the same file for other uh, flight simulators uh, like explain or you want to use using a garmin solution then you need to specify these values it looks like it, that you can get around it uh, if you are using it for flight simulator and now we can simply double click on it and it will bring us to the location let me zoom out here a bit because i don't see it yet here we've got another one tokyo sky tree right so you can see it's really cool it adds those waypoints uh, or user points to your map which makes it i would say cool to navigate because you can simply look on the map hey am i close to a waypoint in that case i can simply uh, add it as one of the waypoints or keep an eye on it uh, during the flight now it's just explained you can also search right you can search for buildings because as you can see the list is i would say pretty long <laughs> we can scroll to it uh -huh. it are 160 entries only for point of interest um, but if you would add more uh, user waypoints for example if i would go to user points and import the csv and would also import the uh, footage and the uh, airports and i did that by pressing the control key and then pressing both in that case it will it will update or it will import both and as you can see now multiple things have been added and if we would go here you will see that also several other things have been added so it now has locations now let me uh, move this one away it had buildings and if we select airports it also shows all the airports and the cool thing of course is that you can search on it right so if we would uh, remove this filter it simply searches to all the items uh, so let's search for uh, what shall we do uh, let me pick something Trisol, for example in India you click on it it will go to it uh, and it will uh, show it on the map normally oh here it is right so it's this place like here sometimes you need to zoom out a bit it could be that it's I would say a little bit different location than where you currently are so using this option is really great if you want to uh, have a closer look at which waypoints are there. Uh, keep in mind that if you want to clear them, you need to do the following. You need to go to user waypoints and then simply say clear database. It will ask confirmation because by default, all the waypoints you're imported are, are stored in the roaming map in a Bartel map. Uh, so you can say yes. And now all the user waypoints are gone. So if you want to import them again, you're free to do. If you made an error, for example, you already start the waypoint and decide to use one of the, let's say, available um, waypoint files on the internet, then you can simply say, okay, hey, I want to clear my uh, user database by using this option and then simply re-import them using the import CSV. So we discussed in this tutorial where you or how you can use the user points yourself but also where to find user points already created by other people for example for flight simulator 2020 usage which is i think it's a very valuable option when uh, planning your flight using a little nav map i hope you like this video if you liked it then consider to use the like button if you've got questions or comments then feel free to post them in the comment box below the video and if you want to stay up to date about new videos i'm posting then consider subscribing to my channel Thanks for watching and see you next time.